welcome to the Holistic Soul Sisters Radio, a channel created to help you heal holistically and grow spiritually. I'm your host, Mandy Rose. I'm not afraid to talk about taboo subjects, so nothing is off limits here. Make sure you hit subscribe and get ready to learn more from me and other experts on all things health, spirituality, astrology, lifestyle, relationships, and so much more. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let's begin. Hi, everyone. It's Mandy Rose. Welcome back to Holistic Soul Sisters Radio. And in this episode, you're only going to hear my voice. This is my solo episode for the mini series Heartbreak to Heal. If you haven't tuned in to any of the other episodes in our mini series Heartbreak to Heal, I definitely encourage you to do so. My purpose for putting it together was to help you heal yourself. We all want to be in relationships. It's a vital part of us as human beings is to be connected with other people. Most of us dream of having, you know, a long-term relationship, but quite honestly, most of us suck at relationships. We suck at loving unconditionally. We suck at not projecting our own trauma and triggers onto other people. We have too high of expectations. We don't have boundaries. And these are things that we don't learn typically from a young age. It's actually quite the opposite. We actually learn bad habits and negative patterns that we carry over into our adult relationships. So this entire mini series of Heartbreak to Heal is meant for you. So whether you're single, whether you're in a relationship that's about to end, whether you're in a committed long-term relationship and you don't want to leave, but you know that there's parts that could be better. And so we're going to focus on healing ourselves. We are going to turn the mirror around. We are going to fill our own cups up so that we can show up as the best version of ourselves in our relationships. Oftentimes we like to say, this person needs to fix this, or I wish they would do more of that, or I expect this for my husband or my wife. But in reverse, we need to worry about changing ourselves and figuring out where is our stuff coming from. And that's what I want to talk about in my solo episode. I've shared a lot on my social media. I've been pretty open and honest about my divorce, about my healing journey from mold toxicity, and all the chaos that was in my life in 2009. So if you haven't heard those episodes in more detail, I have one episode, which is more about my marriage and how that ended so abruptly and so suddenly. And then I have another episode on my healing journey and my health. So if you want to dive in more into the details of those, feel free to listen to those podcast episodes. But in this one, I am going to share with you guys my top 10 tips, tools, and resources that I used to go from the devastating news to get over that heartbreak, soul-crushing feeling in my stomach and turn it around and start healing myself and manifesting my dream life. Now, I want to preface it with just saying, as I'm sharing all of these, I know it's going to sound like I didn't feel the feelings and that I was just like going into survivor mode by doing this and doing that and fixing that. But as I record this, it's been two years since this all had happened in my life. So I have done a lot of healing, a lot of moving forward, and I want to be very clear that I was going through all the emotions. And this was a period of my life where I probably felt the most feelings that I'd ever felt. I'm a very logical, I'm a Virgo, and I just don't like being emotional or vulnerable. And a lot of that actually came from my marriage. My husband would shun me and be mad at me if I got emotional or would be upset or express my feelings. So I learned for a very long time to not share my emotions. So this was a period where I just literally felt all the feelings. So I know a lot of people hear me talk about that season of my life very unemotional now, but during it, I cried all the time. I always had puffy eyes. I really, really struggled, but I knew the times that I could fall apart and that was in the safety and security of my own home and with certain people. And then the times that I needed to boss up and get shit done and go create the life I wanted to live. So I held space for both versions of me during this time. So I just want to preference this episode with letting you guys know that i really, really went through it. And I hope that these top 10 tips give you a little insight and help you wherever you're at, whether you're single, just ending a relationship or in a committed relationship, but you're just not as happy as you'd like to be. So hope you really enjoy the episode. Let's begin. So I just want to start this with a quote because I feel like so many people have gone through divorce. So many people have gone through really heartbreaking, horrible relationships. I think I've gone through enough to last me a lifetime, to be honest with you. And this quote, I remember saving it when all of the drama was going down. And I think you can relate. It says, 
Did it hurt to walk away? Of course it hurt, I said. You don't just walk away from the person you love with joy rushing through your veins. You walk away feeling like you're being gutted on the inside with every step you take. But even though I was hurting badly, I knew that I had to take those steps away from him with faith. Faith that time, coupled with moving forward with my own life, would eventually heal me. God knows that I'd given enough faith into staying and that shit wasn't working. So it was time to put it into something else. And that something else was me walking away. And this just sums up perfect where I was at when I heard this devastating news. I'll give you guys a really quick recap if you don't know the story. I was really, really sick with mold toxicity for about nine months. I couldn't heal. I couldn't figure out what was making me so sick. I was bedridden. I could barely drive a car, couldn't listen to music, could barely cook my own meals. I was going from doctor to doctor, just trying to pretty much, it felt like, stay alive, honestly. And it got to the point where me and my husband, we'd been married for about three years at this point. We'd been best friends for a decade, roommates, coworkers. We had been through a lot in life together. And so we're three years into our marriage and we agreed through counseling. We were also going to couples counseling. We agreed that it would be best for me to go to Europe and heal with my family. It would take the burden and the pressure off of him to cook my meals and to worry about me and take care of me. And I could be surrounded by people who could be with me 24-7 helping me heal And I'll never forget, I was crying so much during that season of my life. I was scared for my health. I was scared for my life. I was scared for my relationship. I was literally scared of everything. And the night before I got on that plane to fly to Germany, which was going to be a four to six week trip, depending on how long it took me to heal, I said to him, I wish you could come with me. I'm going to miss you so much. And at that point in our relationship, we had not been apart for more than maybe a week max at a time. And that included our friendship because we did work together. So neither one of us had really gone on a vacation from work for longer than a week. So we were always around each other. And he said to me, and he said to me, don't worry, love, we're going to get through this. And after this, we'll never be apart again. And I held on to that. And I believe that to be true. He was so committed to me. He always told me he loved me. He was always there for me. We had a really solid relationship. We had no trust issues. We had our little fights here and there, just like every couple does. A lot of it was power struggle issues and not understanding each other. But overall, we spoke every single day while I was gone in Europe. And then all of a sudden, I could sense he was becoming cold irritated and agitated with me. He didn't want to talk to me about my health anymore. He started to get aggressive about my holistic doctors, questioning my healing, saying maybe I wasn't really sick. He just became cold and distant. And I didn't know why. And I never, ever thought to look at Facebook or ask people what was going on that were here back in the States. I just assumed he was going through his own stress and it would all work out and I couldn't wait to get back home to him. After six weeks, I was getting ready to pack my stuff. I was leaving the next morning to fly back home. I was so excited to see him. And we were going through a little bit of a quarrel. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But he, for some reason, was blowing this specific topic way out of proportion. And he sent me a text message that was so simple. And it just said, I think at this time, it's best if you find your own place to live while I assess what I want in this relationship. And I was like, excuse me, I'm your wife. Like, you're not just going to shut me out like this. And then I found out that he wasn't going to come to the airport. And he had gone to a bunch of friends and family that we had, prepared them for the news, got a head start on it, and told them all that we were going to separate. And I got on that plane. He wouldn't speak to me. And sure enough, he didn't come to the airport which was devastating. Now, I'm going to start this Heartbreak to Heal episode right here because in this moment when I was on that plane and I knew my own husband, who was not just my husband, but who was also my best friend for almost a decade, didn't even have the respect for me to show up at the airport, tell me what was going on, and bring me home or bring me to a safe place that I could continue healing. My healing journey was not done yet. And for him to just leave me high and dry as if I didn't even matter to him anymore, I knew on that plane in my soul that that would be something I could never forgive him for. So I got home and I gave him about a week. We did have a couple conversations and I gave him a week of space. And he decided to call me on the phone and said to me, I didn't want to have to say this over the phone, but I don't think you understand what's going on here. I want a divorce. And I was 
devastated. I didn't see this coming. I thought we could work through it. I thought if I gave him time, he would snap back into reality. Maybe he was out drinking and partying too much with his beach friends. I didn't know what happened while I was gone, and he was not prepared to give me any answers on that at all. So at that point, I had to make a decision and I had to choose Team Mandy because my husband, my partner, my best friend, my protector was not going to choose me anymore. And this was really difficult because before I ever got married, I had major commitment issues. I'm not good at trusting other people or believing what they say. I come from a household of a broken marriage and I just could not believe that this was happening to me. So I'm going to share with you guys the tools and the resources that I used from that point forward to really change my life within 90 days. I can't even begin to describe to you guys the transformation that happened when I committed to Team Mandy. And I say this because I know so many of us get out of a relationship, we're broken up with, we end a relationship, and we spend so much energy focused on the other person. What are they doing? Who are they with? If I text them, will they text me back? Do they still love me? Could I be friends with them? Do they want to be friends with me? What's going to happen? And if you're living together, you have to go through that whole conversation of who's going to stay at the house, who's going to leave, who's going to be there at what time. If we bump into each other, are we going to talk to each other? Like there are so many things and so much energy that we pour ourselves into when a relationship is over that I just knew I couldn't do energetically. I had to do a complete 180 and trust in the universe that if he was meant to be my husband, if he was meant to be in my life and we were meant to work through this, that the universe would provide the path. And in the meantime, I needed to focus on healing myself because if he did want to come back to me, I needed to become a better version of myself in that marriage. And that's the thing I want you guys to remember. No matter who's at fault for ending the relationship, no matter where we can place blame, we are all 50% responsible for the ending and every problem in our relationships. This is a hard pill to swallow, right? Because you can say, well, that person cheated. It's all their fault. But what caused them to cheat? And, and I know that's not really fair to say, but I want you to just to take this perspective for one minute. Were you not being supportive? Were you not paying attention to them? Were you maybe too busy in other areas of your life? Or let's say they just weren't happy. Well, that's okay too, because 50% of the responsibility lies on you that you just weren't the perfect person for them. And once we can accept that it's a two-way street, then we can accept the responsibility within ourselves and that's what we work on. So I spent a lot of time reflecting on Mandy. Now in this reflection period, he made it very easy for me to see my flaws because when I asked him why he didn't want to be married, he purged and dumped every mean, harsh thing that he probably had bottled up for the three years of the marriage and the seven years of our overall relationship. And he took no responsibility for his own actions, no responsibility for what he'd done. And I knew in that moment that female intuition, and I knew that the BS he was feeding me for the reasons he wanted the divorce was not true. I would not accept all the projection, all the stuff that he was trying to place blame on me. I knew that there was something he was hiding. I knew in my soul that there was something he had done that he didn't want to admit to because in the way that he was speaking to me was almost sounding like he was trying to convince himself. He told me that the day of our wedding, he didn't want to go through with it, but he didn't want to embarrass me. Now, anyone that was at my wedding knows that that is not true. He was the one sobbing like a baby at the altar. So I knew that these things he was saying was just to try to convince himself that this was the right thing to do. So that's another tip I have for you. So tip number one is work on team you. Tip number two is to watch their behavior like a movie. And why I say that is because we need to take our own emotions out of it. We get so wrapped up in that, I can't believe he's doing this to me, and I got to know the truth. And we just get emotionally wrapped up in every little detail. I want you to zoom out. And I want you to take some space. And I want you to listen to what they say with an objective mind. I want you to watch what they do. If they tell you one thing, like, I don't want to talk to you anymore, but then they're texting you on a Friday night at 2 a.m., watch that behavior and watch how they speak to you. How do they behave when they're around you? Are they uncomfortable? Are they aggravated? And this helped me understand that what he was telling me wasn't the truth. And it also prevented me from being a psychopath. And 
I don't want to criticize anyone who goes through this because trust me, ladies, in my past relationships, I was the psycho. I would stalk. I would follow their car. I would go to their house. I would text them. I'd have people watch their social media. I would, I've would. i done all the things. Like I am psycho stalker 101. But in this situation, I decided to take a hands-off approach. I debated at one point getting a tracker and putting it on his car because we were married. His car was my car. But I said, no, I don't have the energy for that. I never once looked at his social media. I never once tried to text him and ask him where he was. I had only one conversation where I asked him if we could repair it. And he was very clear that he didn't want to be married. So I listened to what he said and I watched it like a movie. I took a step back. And this is the biggest tip I could give to anyone going through this heartbreak or the ending of a relationship. Do not be that girl. It doesn't serve you. It wastes your energy and it stalls you from creating your life, your new life, your new chapter. And again, everything that I did, I thought to myself, if he decides to come back, I don't want to cause more damage. He has caused enough by not picking me up from the airport. He has caused enough damage by abandoning me and not being honest with me. And those are the things we're going to have to work on if we ever come back together. I don't want to add fuel to that fire. Also watching their behavior like a movie, I started realizing how he was treating people in our life that had been friends of our relationship for a really long time. So I had this really good girlfriend that he considered like a younger sister. And she was on his side originally because he's a narcissist, right? Like I was saying, he made people convinced that he was the good guy. I was the bad guy. Woe is me. My wife treats me bad. She doesn't want to be with me. And he spun the whole story. And so she believed him because she trusted him like an older brother and said, Mandy, you need to work on these things. This is what he's saying, blah, blah, blah. Well, when we found out the truth about the other girl, she called him out on it and said, I can't believe that you lied. I can't believe you didn't tell me about this. And what did he do? He immediately blocked her and deleted her from his life, from his social media, wouldn't respond to her text messages. And I thought to myself, how could you just delete and block someone who's been a younger sister and a friend to you for so many years and was actually on your side? And when I realized when he felt like his facade was being threatened, he was willing to cut anybody out of his life. He was in survival mode to protect his truth. And when I saw that, I knew immediately that's what everything was about. And so I was watching it like a movie. So if you're going through something like that, don't be psycho, don't stalk, let the universe come to you and tell you the truth. Because you're actually going to believe it more when you see the signs from the universe than if they tell you. Number three, I committed to being sober. I did not know when I came back and got off that plane if he had gotten a divorce lawyer already. All I knew was that he had gone to our accountant, my dad, my best friends, mutual friends, any person that he had an opportunity to talk to before I got off that plane, he had already spoken with them and prepared them for the news. So I knew that I had to keep my mind strong and I could not make crazy decisions based on alcohol or drugs. So I committed to being sober and this was the best thing I could have ever done. I was emotional enough. I was dealing with enough. Alcohol would have made it 10 times worse. I would not have made sound decisions. I would have felt horrible every day when I woke up and I said, I'm not doing that. I am working on team Mandy because again, it's about me. It's about my life and what I want to create. I want to move forward. I want to have the best life and I wanted to move forward, whether that was with him or without him. I had been sick for nine months. I'd been on a couch. I had lost a lot of time in my life and I wasn't willing to lose more because he was going through whatever he was going through, especially if he was going to shut me out. And here's another quote that I had read and saved at that time and it really helped me get through this season. It says, how they say goodbye will tell you everything about why they weren't the one. I knew that somebody who could just up and abandon you like you never existed had their own demons going on. So for the first month, I got back on July 17th and all the way until August 27th, I laid low. We never sat down one time and just had an honest conversation. He was living his own life completely unconcerned with what I was up to. He didn't ask me how my health was or what was going on in my life or if I was going to move out. And he just kept saying the same thing every time I saw him. When you're ready to file for divorce, let me know. And I was like, excuse me, you wanted this. Maybe you should go file. I thought maybe there's a reason he didn't want to file. Maybe he was unsure. 
So I let that go for about six weeks until one day I got the phone call of the truth that I knew in my heart the whole time. There was another girl. So when I found out about the other girl, I remember saving this quote and it just got me through that devastating news that there was someone else. And the worst part about it, you guys, is her and I were actually friends on social media. Like I had had conversations with her. I'd helped her with her health. And to this day, obviously they both deny it, but I really don't care. This quote says it all. It's about karma. I didn't wish him all the best because that would be a lie, but I didn't wish him all the worst either. I simply wished him whatever it was he deserved. Now, whether he deserved good or bad things was none of my business. That was between him and karma. Although he would never be honest about the depth of their relationship, I had had enough information from multiple people, including, again, the way he said things when I confronted him. I watched him like a movie, not emotional. I watched it like a movie. I knew that there was another girl. And in that moment, I made that decision to 100% walk away. Because had he been honest about the other woman, had he been honest about his feelings and what they had been up to while I was gone in another country, I could have forgave. We could have went to counseling. I could have understood why he needed the attention of another female, why he was being intimate with somebody else. But to not be honest with me was it. So my tip number four can be very personalized to you and how it works for you. And that is work on your spiritual practice. I wanted to be very connected to my intuition. That's how I figured out about the other girl. That's how I figured out everything I needed to know about what he was up to. I trusted my own intuition. And the only way I was going to hear my inner voice and hear my spirit guides was connecting to a spiritual practice. So I'm going to give you guys some fun tools that I use to acquire my spiritual practice. Number one is I got goddess cards. They're an oracle deck and there's so many oracle decks. You could just go on Amazon and type in oracle decks and there's ones with animals, there's ones with goddesses, there's ones with gemstones. There are so many. So find one that calls to you. And with this deck, I would just pull a card whenever I needed guidance, whenever I needed direction, whenever I needed God to speak to me and tell me what to do next or give me a reminder of what I needed to do or how I should be feeling in that moment, I pulled a card. And this saved me so many times. I have screenshots from that time of my life of all the cards that I had pulled on different days. And now I can go back and be like, wow, I seem to pull this card over and over and over again. It was very clear that that was the message I was meant to receive. So goddess cards, number one. The second thing is I got a selenite wand. And if you follow me on social media, you know that my selenite wand sleeping routine has been the most crazy experience ever. Selenite is a clear crystal, and it's one of the only crystals that does not need to be recharged. It diminishes negative energy. It doesn't store any negative energy. So I would hold on to this crystal while I slept. And it helps dispel negative energy. So I always fell asleep with anxiety and sadness and heartbreak, and I just felt awful all the time, partially because of my health and obviously because of this heartbreak. So I would hold this crystal wand and I would fall asleep at night and I would have the most intuitive dreams. You guys, I'm not even kidding. I had dreams about names of women that my husband was hanging out with. I had premonitions of what was going to happen, and literally most of them were true. So I slept with a selenite wand. I also started working on balancing my chakras. And you can do this with a Reiki practitioner. You can use this with crystals. But the easiest way is to go to YouTube and type in sound frequency for blank. So sound frequency for heartbreak, sound frequency for solar plexus chakra, sound frequency for root chakra. Sound frequency for sadness, sound frequency for divorce. I mean, there are literally, you could type in anything behind the word sound frequency and I would sleep to that music. And what sound frequency is, it's a hertz of sound, which is a specific wavelength of sound that helps calibrate and equalize the cells in your body. So this was amazing. I did this every single night and it helped so much with my energy. And when I would first wake up, of course, I would look at my hand, see that I didn't have my wedding ring on anymore. That was devastating. My next thought was, is this still real life? Are we still breaking up? And then my third thought was, 
I actually don't feel so bad about it. So sound frequency was amazing. And then I would also spend a lot of time meditating. I would go to the beach and just sit there and stare and meditate. This is like a crazy concept looking back, but this is how I handled it. I would just block out the world. I would almost pretend as if it wasn't happening for 10 minutes. I would just meditate and envision the life I wanted and act like everything was fine and just almost trick my mind and my body into peace and serenity. And I swear that that started the manifestation process for me. That started all the abundance that was going to flow into my life very shortly. And the thing is with our mind, it doesn't know if what we're thinking is real or not, if it's actually happening in our lives or not. So when I'm thinking of negative thoughts and my heartbreak and pain and upset and hate and anger... That's all the energy that my body is going to feel. But if I'm sitting there meditating, thinking of this beautiful life that's happening, that this is all happening for a reason, I have a new fresh start on life, and this is what I want, and this is the man I want in my life, and this is where I want my career, that's what my body is going to feel. So meditating was huge. So I'm going to go right into tip number five is my alone time. This was massive, and this goes along with being single. Do not, do not, please do not jump into another relationship when you get out of one. Because the purpose for being single is to discover yourself so deeply that you don't lose yourself when you actually find the next one. And that's such a big deal. This season of breaking up is to help you figure out who you are. Figure out what you stand for so that you don't lose that again in a relationship. And if you're listening to this and you're in a relationship, we can lose ourselves so fast. And this contributes to our 50% fault of all the damage that's happening in our relationship. If you lose yourself, if you are not committed to your own healing, if you're not committed to your own responsibility for your own life then you can't show up in your relationship. You are putting too much pressure on that other person. So alone time is massive. It also creates a little distance and space in your relationship for the other person to have their alone time so that they can reflect, so they can take a pause, so they can figure out what they want, so they can show up for you as the best version of themselves. So alone time, whether you're single, whether you're just getting out of a relationship, or you are in a relationship, that alone time is massive. And so people say, well, what do you do in your alone time? Honestly, anything you want. I would go to the beach. I would go to the gym. I would go for a walk. I would journal. I would watch YouTube videos on things that I loved. I would dream about my business and brainstorm. I would just do anything to keep me busy, but it was alone, not talking to other people. And trust me, when I was going through this, you guys, I was on the phone almost every day with my mom and my godparents in Germany. Every day they were checking up on me, getting updates. I mean, it was so chaotic. You guys have to honestly go back to the episode about the whole ending of the marriage because it is so wild. I I wish I could make a movie on it because it's unbelievable. So I was on the phone every day, but I had to make time for myself to be alone. And that's where I started healing. So when all this first happened and I was alone, I started doing a lot of research to try to understand myself. I researched divorce on YouTube. I watched all these videos on heartbreak and healing and what to do. And I was just really, really lost. I was going through what was called a dark night of the soul. If you've never heard of the term dark night of the soul, it's a spiritual phrase that pretty much talks about your whole world crumbling around you, your health, what you know about reality, relationships. I mean, just everything in your life is crumbling down so that you can rebuild it the way that you want to. So I was going through this dark night of the soul and I came across these videos on narcissism. And I'm not sure if anyone else in this mini series talks about narcissism. Um, I am doing a separate episode with my girlfriend on this topic because she also dated someone for a very long time who was a narcissist. And it's becoming more popular and we all have some history of narcissism. So I'm not going to dive too much into like the specifics of it. But when I realized that my husband was a narcissist, everything shifted in my brain. I was like, oh my God, I did not see this. I had no idea that this was going on. And if you don't know about it, just Google the term narcissism or traits of a narcissist. I'm not going to bash him on this podcast, but just Google traits of a narcissist. And it's pretty close to the way things were in our relationship. And so this concept of recognizing what was going on, I was like, wow, 
I just got really lucky from the universe. I'm not only realizing this to be the truth of my entire relationship, but I now am away from this. I am out of this. And that energy shift honestly allowed me to start healing a lot faster because I didn't feel crazy anymore. I started to realize that it was super toxic, that I couldn't be me. I couldn't be my authentic self. I needed to be a watered down version of myself so that he felt comfortable. And this aha moment literally changed so much for me. And that leads me to tip number six. Number six is so important. It's so important for every single person, even if your relationship's perfect. Write down your daily health and wellness to-do list. This is massive because instead of focusing on the other person and what they should be doing or how they're not showing up and what they're doing wrong, you turn the mirror towards you and you start to fill up your own cups. You're not grasping at them to make you feel better and to make you happy and to make you feel worthy. So a daily health and wellness to-do list. And on my daily health and wellness to-do list, it was eat a certain number of vegetables, get in the sauna, take a bath, Go for a walk. Take your supplements. It was all self-care related things. Things that I needed to do that would only benefit Team Mandy. Because again, I couldn't expect my partner to give me my supplements. I could not expect my partner to give me the endorphins that I could get from exercising. I needed to be very clear about all the things that I could do for my own health and wellness. And I wrote it down on a to-do list. And that also helped me with my alone time. So when I was alone and I didn't really know what to do and I felt devastated, I'd open up the notes section of my phone. I would pull out that to-do list and I would start checking something off. So then tip number seven is only going to apply for those who are single already or just getting out of a relationship and you're going through that heartbreak phase. And that is be single. And I know probably most of you looking from the outside are going to be like, well, you didn't stay single for very long. And we're totally going to address that in the podcast that me and my boyfriend are going to do because from the outside, it appears that I've been in a relationship since I got out of my marriage. But what you guys are going to hear in that episode, it was totally the opposite. I spent so much time alone and healing myself. I spent so much time with my friends. Like, This poor guy waited for so long for me to commit to him and I love him and honor him and appreciate him so much for that because even though I wanted more space and more time to be single, I knew that the timing of the universe just worked together and gave me that aha moment of what are you trying to accomplish? You already know who you are and you did your single thing. So in that single time, what does that mean, right? It doesn't necessarily mean date and sleep around because I think people assume like, oh, if I'm single, it means I can, you know, go be with whomever I wanted. And that's not what I mean when I say be single. When I say be single, it means this is a time in your life where you get to assess what you want and what you expect and what you won't settle for anymore. My goal with this mini series is to help you never to have heartbreak again. And that doesn't mean that you're never going to end a relationship because there's a difference between ending a relationship and having heartbreak, right? We can have the sadness and the pain and that mourning and that grief and that loss process. We can absolutely and should absolutely honor that when a relationship ends. But we should not be so devastated that we are heartbroken, soul crushing, on the couch feeling so lost. And that's what alone time and single time does for us. It helps us realize that we are never alone. We are always with us and we should build and form that bond because you're the only person you're ever going to be with for the rest of your life. So in your single time, you want to figure out what are your needs? What are your wants? What do you expect in a relationship? Who are you qualifying? Don't just get into that next relationship and be like, he'll do because I'm lonely or he's good enough or he has potential or I'm going to ignore this red flag. No, no, no. When you're single, you have that opportunity to say yes or no to everything and anything that comes into your life. And it's such a beautiful season to be in when you're single. You don't have to answer to anyone. You don't have to check in with anyone. You don't have to see if your plans and your dreams and hopes and wishes match with someone else's. So this is your season to be completely selfish and to get very, very clear about what you wanted. And that's what I did. I knew that now that this marriage was over and I was standing on my own two feet and I was alone, I could manifest everything I wanted. And so I started 
started to travel. My husband always had an excuse for why we couldn't travel. It was money or work or this or that. And I said, screw that. I have points on my credit card with Southwest. I have friends that live in different parts of the country. I'm going for it. And the universe will provide. And you guys, the universe always provided. Even though my husband locked me out of accounts, took my financial resources away, changed passwords. I mean, you guys, crazy shit. Um, I just trusted that the universe would provide. And I went to Austin, Texas and got to experience a state I'd never been in. I went home to visit my family. I went to a wedding with my cousin. I ended up going to New York City for the Macy's Day Parade. I mean, it was an amazing experience. So I did the things in my single and my alone time that I wouldn't have been able to do if I was with a partner. And I also started to focus on my business. Now, this tip number eight is going to apply to everyone. Tip number eight is focus on your goals, your purpose, your business, your mission, whatever you want to call it. This takes the pressure off of your relationship. If you're having a lot of chaos in your relationship and you're you're committed to staying, you're probably nitpicking over little things. You're probably fighting about the same things all the time. You're probably looking at your partner every day from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed saying, you didn't do this. I expected him to do that. He didn't show up here. I wish he would have done more of this. And you're just criticizing, 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 nitpicking and calling them out all day long. But instead, turn the mirror around. What are your dreams? What could you be working on? Do you want to create a side hustle? Do you have a passion to create a product? Did you want to open an Etsy store? What has been on your back burner that you have not done because you're focusing too much energy on your relationship? And this is beautiful when you're just getting out of a relationship and you're going through heartbreak, focusing on your purpose and your mission and serving the world. What can you bring into the world? What can you give to others? In that season when your heart is breaking so much, you guys, my heart was so broken. I I just opened it and said, how can I pour into others? Because that's what love is, right? I wanted to love other people and I did not want to be jaded by the pain I was going through. So I got clear on my business. I created Holistic Soul Sisters. I started brainstorming products. I mean, I just went all in on all the passions that I, for some reason, had put on the back burner because I was more focused about the other person and why I wasn't happy than creating my own dream and my own reality. If you're single and you're just in that stage of like, I just wish I could find a partner. I just want to meet somebody. Create that business, sister. Get out there and make some things happen for yourself because that's how you're going to come in contact with people that are aligned vibrationally with you. Number nine, this tip was vital for me, and that is to build new and better connections with other people. When we're in relationships or even when we first get out of a relationship, we can feel so alone. We can feel like we've neglected our friends. We don't call our mom as much or our dads. We don't really develop even new connections outside of the relationship. Typically, every new friend you have becomes a friend of the relationship, other couples. And then when it's over or then when things are rough, you feel like you have no one to go to because you don't want to go complain to a mutual friend that puts that person in the middle of your relationship, right? And you don't want to feel like you get out of a relationship and now you have nobody to talk to because you've neglected everyone for so long. And now they feel like, oh, now she's back because she's single, right? We've all been on both sides of that spectrum. On one side, we've been the single friend like, gosh, I don't want to call this girl because she probably thinks I'm only coming to her now because my relationship ships over. And and then we've also been the friend that hasn't heard from someone for a really long time. And now they're single and they call us and we're like, oh, of course, now they call. But this is such a beautiful moment to reconnect and to create new relationships with people. I was in my marriage and I felt so lonely because I didn't have any friends to call my own. Everyone had become a friend of our relationship. I couldn't vent to anyone. Anytime I talked to someone, they were always on his side because he was really good, like I said at the beginning of the episode, at being narcissistic. And so I had no one to go to. And I remember sitting on my couch when I was really sick and I prayed to the universe and I said, I just want a good group of girlfriends. And I had really cut everyone out of my life at that point to be a really good wife and to be committed to my marriage. And so when everything crumbled, I thought, oh my God, I have nobody. But I created a stronger bond with my mom. We've never been as close as we've ever been because she was there for me in that season of my life. She understood me. She'd been through her own divorce and she had lifted me up in ways that I could never expect my mother to do. And I had to give her that opportunity. I had to lean in. I had to call her. I had to be vulnerable and say, mom, I need your help. Like I'm not the 33-year-old strong girl I thought I was. Like help me. 
And with my girlfriends that I had kind of let down and abandoned, they all circled back around because they knew that I was going through something that I needed them for and they showed up. And the ones that didn't show up, that was okay too. They were in their own season of life and I gave them grace and patience and said, I will now find new people to replace the people that just can't be here right now. And the universe, you guys, blessed me with the most amazing group of women. If you're one of those women that stepped into my life in July and August of 2019 and was there for me, I love you so freaking much. I am so grateful to God every day that you came into my life because there were so many women I did not know before July 15th when I got that text message and they showed up out of nowhere and they lifted me up and they guided me and they checked in on me and they have been there since that day as a solid rock in my life. So if you're single or you're getting out of a relationship and you're thinking I have no one, it goes back to all the tips I said before. Focus on you. Work on yourself, spend your alone time, get clear with your spiritual practice, meditate, manifest the life that you want, believe it's possible, and these women will show up. And number 10 is going to lead me to probably the most important tip because it goes back to not jumping into a relationship right away because we need this time to heal. And if you're in a relationship, this applies to you just as much as it does to all the people who are single. So if you're in a relationship, stop, pause in your life right now and work on this exercise. Number 10, get clear on your boundaries and get very, very clear on your needs and your non-negotiables. These three things, you should have a list either on your phone, in your journal, somewhere where you can revisit them very often because they are the most important things and it is part of your 50% that you can be responsible for in your relationships your boundaries. What will you tolerate and what will you not tolerate? So for me, a boundary now is if somebody name calls me, I will leave the conversation. I will leave the room. I am done. If you name call me, we are not getting anywhere. You do not respect me. And this conversation is completely over. Boundary. Another boundary that I decided after my marriage fell apart is that if you don't honor me when I am crying, if you don't show up for me emotionally, then you can't be a part of my life. Because if someone in front of me is crying, I will always console them, even if I'm mad, even if I'm heartbroken, even if I'm upset. And if you can't do that for me and you're going to storm out of the room and tell me that when I'm done being emotional, we can have a conversation then that's my boundary. Then we're not meant to be and I'm not going to tolerate that. So get very clear on your boundaries. That way, when someone gets to the point where they're disrespecting you, you know exactly what you're going to do and you've communicated it to them. Say, hey, this is my boundary. When you cross it, this is going to be the consequence. This is the action I'm going to take. Then your needs. Do you even know your needs? This is something that we just put on the back burner for so long because we just get so wrapped up in the person that we love and we just want to be there for them and love them and focus on them. But we need to know our needs so that we can communicate them to our partner. So so always go back to your love languages. If you don't know your love language, go take the love language quiz right now, fivelovelanguages.com. Figure out what your needs are according to your love languages. Then also figure out what your needs are in a relationship. I need a partner that's intelligent so that I can have stimulating conversations. I need a partner that's open to my spirituality. I need a partner that loves to travel and prioritizes travel in the budget and in their lifestyle. I got really clear, you guys. I wrote a whole list of everything I needed in a partner. And when I met my now boyfriend, I was like, holy crap, he checks this box and this box and this box. Like it was insane. But had I not gotten clear on my needs, I probably would have accepted any relationship that was eh, good enough or better than my husband. And I didn't want better than my husband. I wanted ideal. I wanted to know that if I committed to someone again, they were going to be beyond extraordinary, that I was going to sacrifice Mandy time to be with them. So get clear on your needs. And then lastly, get clear on your non-negotiables. What are non-negotiables? This is like the opposite of our needs. My non-negotiable is smoking cigarette. My non-negotiable is doing drugs. My non-negotiable is someone who wants to live in the same place for the rest of their life and is not open to moving somewhere else. Write these three lists for yourself. And if you're in a relationship and you write these three lists, it's going to help you get really clear on why you're not happy with this person, right? Why are you fighting? Why are you always bickering? You might realize, oh my gosh, they're not meeting my need of acts of service. 
And now you can actually go to them and communicate that and say, hey, I realize that I'm just getting upset with you all the time over the littlest things like the dishes and you not coming home right away and X, Y, and Z. But really, but really, it's just you're not meeting my need of active service. You know, this sparks conversation to healing, right? Heartbreak to heal. So if you're in that heartbreak relationship, but you don't want to leave, start working on healing. And that's a tip that will help you. And if you're single, this is going to help you not just rebound into the next relationship that's going to be the same person in a different body. You guys, I dated the same person in a different body over and over and over again. (laughs) And I know so many women who have done the exact same thing. So that last tip, number 10, is get clear on your boundaries, needs, and non-negotiables. So of course, I talked a lot longer than I had expected. I wanted to make this very short and simple for you guys, but I hope you got some value out of it. And I'm going to end it with sharing this quote because I think so many people can relate to this when they've gone through a heartbreak, a divorce, the ending of something that they thought they would have forever. And it might give you a little bit of peace. Also something I screenshotted when I was going through this. And it says, maybe you're not the woman for him either though. And that doesn't take away from the woman you are. It doesn't make you inferior. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could simply mean that maybe you are too good for him or that maybe he's not ready for someone like you. Or maybe he wants someone who's less of a challenge, easier to manipulate, walk all over. Maybe he's got bad karma that's supposed to catch up with him and the entire universe is working overtime to get you away from him and keep you out of that mess. It's not only them who aren't for us, girl. Sometimes we aren't for them either. And this is so beautiful. Please remember this. The universe is conspiring in ways that you can't understand right now. If you're in the middle of your heartbreak, if you're just getting out of that situation, or maybe it's been a year or two and you're still feeling some piece of your heart broken from that situation, know that sometimes it's just that you're not meant to be in their life. Maybe they have some karma coming and you're not supposed to go through it with them. You're supposed to be living your next level, your beautiful life. And that's just what I believed wholeheartedly when I walked away from that marriage. He wants to go drink and party and he wants to be surrounded by certain people and he wants different things. There might be something coming up in a year or two that he needs to go through that I'm not meant. I have enough stuff that I'm dealing with. I have enough pain that I've carried through my life and maybe the universe is protecting me from that. And honestly, sometimes you might be growing spiritually and working on yourself and advancing in your career and working on your health. And it's just causing the separation between the two of you. are just two different people where one wants to level up and grow and the other one just doesn't. So we can have people that are in our life for a season and honor and cherish it. And I try to look back at all the memories that we've created and I'm grateful for them. And honestly, it taught me so much about myself, even when it was over that I realized I needed to improve. I needed to step up and be a better girlfriend and a better wife the next time around. I needed to heal parts of myself that I was just hiding because I was focusing on him and us and being a wife. And I also needed to realize how strong I was. I forgot how badass I was because I was letting someone else make all the decisions and to step all over me and not let me shine. I hope my story inspires you guys and gives you some tips and tricks and You know, I come here now and talk about it without tears and I sound so confident, so strong, but it's been a two-year process. My divorce just got finalized yesterday, June 21st of 2021, and my husband told me he wanted a divorce in July of 2019. So now a question I get a lot is, are you over it? How can you talk about it without being upset? And to be honest with you guys, I don't know if I'll ever get over it. There's moments, of course, where something happens in my life and I just get really angry and I start to feel that hate for him. How could you just leave me? How could you promise something at the altar? How could you walk away when I was sick? Like, how dare you? What a horrible person you are. And I get all these angry feelings. But then I have to like stop and pause and I start going, But had he not done that, you wouldn't have healed. You wouldn't be as happy as you are now. You wouldn't have these opportunities that you have now. You wouldn't have the girlfriends that you have now. And he's going through his own struggles. I believe it 100%. And I try to come back to compassion and go, he's suffering from things that he will never share with anyone, that he will ignore the rest of his life, and that he will project into every single relationship until he's ready to heal. And I just am not around to be projected on anymore. So yes, I still have my moments of sadness but 
They're getting far and few in between. It was honestly the most devastating thing that could and will ever happen to me. I promise myself that that will never happen again. Even if a relationship that I'm in that I commit to long term or for the rest of my life, if that falls apart, I know I will never be devastated like that again. Not because I don't love that person. I actually think now I'm capable of actually loving someone more than I ever have in my entire life. But I know that at the end of the day, I always have my own back and I'm capable of picking up pieces. When you get into that next relationship, nothing is forever. You could be married to someone for 20 years and they could pass away, right? And what's going to be left? That's you. So I needed to become strong and I needed to trust myself that I was capable of dealing with whatever it was going to be. And now I know that. And so that is such a blessing that's come from that. So I'm going to end this with one last quote, and I pray that the same journey happens for you. And if you're going through it, please reach out to me on social media. I have had the blessing of sharing my story with so many women that have found out that they're getting a divorce or being the ones to stand up strong and say, this isn't the life I want and I'm going to file for divorce or women who have gone through a breakup and are just in that lost phase of their life and say, how did you do it? And I am here to support you. My heartbreak and my truth is meant to be shared with other people and to guide you guys to healing and happiness and that life that's coming for you right around the corner. So please reach out to me. My Instagram is mandyrose.1111. Just send me a message. Share with me what you're going through. And I would love to hold space for you and just give you any resources that I use. And so I'm going to end this episode. Thank you guys for listening to me. Please listen to all the other episodes in our mini series, Heartbreak to Heal, the other women and men who share their stories. It's an honor for them to share it and be vulnerable and give you guys some tools and resources from their own perspective of what they've been through. And also the therapists and self-care coaches and experts that have come in from a mental, physical, and health perspective to give you guys some more resources to become the best version of you because that's what it's about. Show up as the best version of you. So I'm going to read this and that's it for this episode. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So the quote says, she shared her story with strength and reflected on the negative in a positive light. And above all, no tears came to the surface. She had made peace with her past, let it go, and something wonderful had moved through into its place. She knew it was meant to happen. She knew it was all for a greater cause. She had healed and life was once again the miraculous adventure that she knew it always was. She had just forgotten for a little while. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode. I'll catch you in the next one. And until then, keep healing holistically and growing spiritually. Thank you.